In this video, we continue with our quantitative description of phase diagrams by introducing the clausius clapeyron equation. All right, in the last video, we have derived the Clapeyron equation in which we can predict what the slope of any line in the phase boundaries uh, is. And uh, that equation, the Clapeyron equation, is simply uh, the slope of a pressure versus temperature uh, line, which are these phase boundaries. Right, that is simply the ratio of uh, the change in molar entropy in the phase transition divided by the change in molar volume in that same phase transition, or, uh, more conveniently, uh, the change in the enthalpy in the phase transition divided by the temperature at which you're working and the change in molar volume at that phase transition. This is more convenient because the enthalpies are generally available in tables for phase uh, transitions, Right? Uh, generally, the entropies are not so uh, readily available, even though you can calculate them uh, easily. All right, great. So it turns out that we can actually simplify this even more if the final phase is the gas, right? So we will be looking at this phase boundary and crossing it this way, and that phase boundary is linked to gas, crossing it that way, right? So the final phase is the gas. And the reason that we want to do that is because uh, this term that you, ha you have here in the denominator simplifies dramatically. Right? Notice that that term in the denominator is simply the change in the molar volume as you're going uh, from an initial phase, which can either be the liquid or the solid, to the gas. Right? That is the change in molar volume in that phase transition, which is the same thing as the molar volume of the gas minus the molar volume of the initial phase, which is either the liquid or the solid. So I'm going to write them simply as alpha. All right, so let's think about uh, this uh, difference right here. Let's think about water at ambient conditions, right? So water gas at ambient conditions of one atmosphere and 288 Kelvin, the molar volume is the molar volume of an ideal gas, and that's about 24 liters or so, 24 liters. Now, when you think about the liquid, so vaporization, the molar volume of liquid water at ambient conditions is 18 mils, milliliters, right? So you go from 24 liters you know, to 18 milliliters, right? So this number that you have right here is more than a thousand times smaller than that number. And what that means is that, well, you can completely neglect it and not make a large mistake, right? That's just the molar volume of the gas. This not only happens for waters, this happen, for water, this happens for, for any other substance. For example, benzene at a temperature close to the boiling point has a, a difference in molar volumes for the gas and the liquid of about 300. Okay, so the molar, gas of the, uh, the molar volume of the gas is 300 times greater than the molar volume of the liquid, right? So this approximation works uh, universally for, for substances at uh, uh, normal conditions, right? So uh, then that means that our, our Clapeyron equation is going to be simplified dramatically, right? Notice that now you're going to have that that's simply the change in enthalpy in the phase transition, so from alpha to gas, right? So this will either be sublimation enthalpy or vaporization enthalpy divided by T multiplied by the molar volume of the gas Right, but again, we have neglected entirely the smaller volume of the initial phase, liquid or solid, compared to the gas. But of course, if this is a gas and we're working at ambient conditions of pressure or thereabouts, then we can apply the ideal gas equation of state, and we know that the molar volume of a gas then is equal to RT over P. Okay, so what that means is that we can write the following. P multiplied by the molar volume sorry, molar enthalpy of the phase transition, All right, so that would be gas change in enthalpy in that phase transition divided over RT squared. Okay, a very, very, very simple expression. This is uh, the clausius clapeyron equation. And notice how simple this is, right? Uh, every time that you're being asked to calculate the slope of a phase boundary, the problem needs to tell you exactly where that calculation is, right? So do you want it at that point, that point, that point, that point? So what that means is that the problem has to specify somehow both the pressure and the temperature at which you're calculating this, right? So the problem must give you this P 
and that t. Right, so the only thing that you actually need to know to calculate in the slow is, is uh, the change in enthalpy of that phase transition at, that, at those conditions, right? Which makes it very simple because you don't have to have a knowledge of things like the molar volume of the liquid phase or the solid phase, which are, you know, generally not so, so easy to get. Okay, so again, this is a nice uh, simplification of the Clapeyron equation. It's called the clausius clapeyron equation, and it only applies uh, when the final phase is the gas.